Hello and welcome to lesson number two of our series on CSS animations. In today's video, we will create together a bouncing ball animation. Now, this animation is way more um, interesting and complex than you'd imagine, but in particular, it's going to give us the chance to talk about timing functions. Now, believe me when I say that if you really want to master CSS animations, you have to understand and properly use timing functions. As usual, if you want to follow along, you can either click on the CodePen link to our CodePen template, or you can download the lesson on GitHub. You will find the link to uh, both uh, template and GitHub lessons in uh, the YouTube video description. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, we have the structure of this uh, bouncing ball uh, loader. So we have this is the loader, this is the code of the loader, and if you uh, check the parent, we have some utility classes used to center the content. Now, these utility classes here, they come from CodeFrame, and if you inspect the style.scss file, which is where we will create the component, and by the way, I'm using uh, the lesson from uh, the starting template from, from GitHub, um, you will notice that we are importing uh, the Kodi House framework, which is our CSS framework that we're going to use throughout the entire course. Um, think of it as a starting point for any CSS project. Uh, it, it provides some uh, utility classes and uh, customizable uh, um, custom properties. So we're going to use it just because it makes our life so much easier. If you want to learn more about the Kodi frame, which is the name of uh, which is the name of the Kodi House framework, you can check uh, the documentation on our website. Anyway, utility classes are pretty straightforward. Each utility class does just one thing, for example, uh, and it's really intuitive because a flex class means uh, setting a display property equal to flex for this element. Flex center will uh, center the child, the children of this element in the center. And then we are using a padding YXL that sets a top and bottom, bottom padding for this element. Okay. Now, this is all the custom uh, stuff we're going to be creating. So first of all, um, we have some accessibility tips here because accessibility is obviously very, very important. So we are using an SR only class always from CodeFrame because we want this content to be visible only for users accessing the page using assistive technologies. So uh, we have an area hidden of true on the discord here which is actually the ball and the shadow and because with the area hidden true we are actually hiding the content from um, for, for assistive technologies so we are displaying for assistive technologies just a simple message content is loading and if you think about that it makes sense that if we have for example a visually impaired user well we just want to give uh, them a message the content is loading, so please wait. Uh, we are also using role alert because we want this message to be the first thing, thing they hear when they access the page right after the title of the page. And we are hiding the content about the ball because it really doesn't matter for a visually impaired user. And we are doing the opposite for other users. We are hiding the content is loading message and we are showing the um, loader. Okay, so now that we know everything about the structure, we can switch to the SCSS, take all this code and delete it and start from scratch. Okay, so let's uh, copy the bouncing loader class here. And uh, first of all, we want to set a width and a height. Uh, now, uh, when uh, we want, when you want to set width and height, and they will have the same size. Well, it's a good habit to use a custom property for this, at least that's what I do. So I set, for example, a custom property equal to something, in this case, 128 pixels. And then I apply this variable to both the width and the height. Now we want to set a display of inline block. Uh, we want to set the position relative and now let's finally let's add a background color with a temporary color of light 
gray just because we want to see uh, where this uh, box is. Okay, right there. So um, now we can move to the ball. We can uh, go with this class here and move forward. Okay, so once again, we want to set width and height for this element as well. And instead as um, instead as writing uh, a, a plain value here, for example, instead as uh, putting down width and height equal to 60 pixels, we also want a, um, a background color and we're going to use a custom property actually a variable from uh, the code house framework which is color primary which is the primary the main color the main action color and save now uh, by the way um, um, if you see autocomplete in my um, wh while I'm typing that's because I have installed a um, an extension you will find uh, uh, many extensions on our extensions page and probably an extension for your code editor too. So make sure to install it because it's going to make your uh, coding so much faster. And now we want to set a border radius of 50% because we want to turn this um, square into a circle. And we were saying before, instead of using plain values for width and height, we can actually set this value equal to relative to the sides of the uh, the main sides of the loader so for example if we create a new custom property ball sides equal to we can set we can use a calc function and set it equal to the sides of the loader divided by three and save now we can uh, copy this uh, custom property and uh, use it here for both the width and the height and now you can save now uh, what's the advantage of this approach if later on you want to change the size of the loader because well, let's be honest right now we are building a huge loader because i just want to make sure that you guys can see what we're doing while checking the youtube video but in a real project you are probably going to use a smaller loader uh, with this approach, you can pick any sides you want. And if you change these sides here, for example, let's uh, use, I don't know, let's use 96 pixels and save. The ball is going to uh, be resized together with the loader. So everything is always proportional. So I think this, uh, this is a smart approach anyway. 128 pixels okay actually we can make it even slightly bigger so that it's easier to see what we're doing okay now we want to move this uh, ball and uh, we are going to give it a, a position of absolute and top of zero a left of 50 percent and then i'm going to use the transformation translate x of minus 50 percent now this is a trick to center content horizontally so what we're doing here we are setting a left value equal to 50 percent because this element is in position absolute this absolute this is 50 percent the sides of the parent in a position relative so this is the center the very center of the the main loader so we are pushing the ball by 50 percent the sides of the main loader now the transformation instead is in relation to the sides of the element itself the element uh, to which we are applying the transformation so 50 percent here is equal to 50 percent of the ball so it's these sides right here so we are moving this element by 50 percent to the left by applying a negative value and in doing, so, in doing so, we are perfectly centering this circle um, in relation to the parent. Okay, now this is all for the ball. We can move forward with the, the shadow. We are going to copy some of the properties here because we want to make the shadow of the same size of the, uh, the ball. And now we can apply a background color a different one so we want the shadow to be a uh, black with a lower opacity so we're going to use hsla now hsla just a different way to define colors maybe you are used to hexadecimal values which is something like uh, 
this and then you have the, the value. HSA, HSLA stands for U saturation lightness and alpha channel, which is the opacity. So for black it's 0, 0%, 0 0%, 0 and 0 0.2. Uh, defining the colors using HSLA um, it's, it's really powerful because you can create, you can easily create variations of these colors by changing these values here. Now we also want to move this element with a position absolute and we want to place it this time at the bottom. We want to center it uh, horizontally so we're going to copy this stuff and paste it here. Now we want to um, the center of this uh, circle here to be right here at the bottom of the main box of the loader. So we're going to apply, we're going to apply another translate, but this time a translate Y. And because we want to move it down, it's going to be a positive value of 50% because remember this is 50% the size of the circle. And now because this is a shadow, we want to squeeze it and the best way to do so is to apply another transformation and this time it's a scale Y to for example 0 0.4. Now we also want to make it slightly wider compared to the, to the, to the ball because if, you, uh, because if we have the shadow here, you have to imagine a, light, uh, uh, of, so a source of light over here. So when the ball gets closer, to the source of light, uh, the shadow is going to be slightly wider. So we're going to apply so a scale X of 1.2 and save. Now, because also the shadow is, uh, the size of the shadow is related to the size of the loader. Now, once again, if we remove, for example, this element here, and uh, if we uh, change the size to something very small, like 24 pixels, for example, um, the proportions are always the same. So you, your loader is going to look fine um, just by setting a, a single value here, a single size. You don't have to go through all the sizes of the elements and change them all. In this case, for example, if you're using this, um, this component in uh, multiple pages and you want to use it with different sizes, by creating a custom property, you can uh, either create a class variation here, for example, uh, Bouncing loader small with a size of um, 24 pixels. Then you can copy this class and use it where you need the loader to be smaller. For example, right here, we can add bouncing loader small. And here we have the smaller version of the loader. Or you can actually change the custom property in line by changing the value of the site's custom property. And you can set here any value you want. For example, uh, 96 pixels and save. And now you have the loader with a bigger size, 96 pixels. Okay, so this uh, marks the end of this video. So in the next one, we are going to animate this ball. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.